Hello everyone, before I get going with the topic of this video, I'm going to take a step back and thank all of you wholeheartedly for taking out time from your precious schedule to watch my videos. The channel has now hit 100 subscribers and I really appreciate the support that I've got so far. This will surely spur me to create content that is useful and interesting for you a lot. Today we'll talk about radio access network functional splits. Though most of our focus for the video will be on 4G slash LTE and 5G slash NR, I want to remind you that functional split is not a recent concept. Close to 20 years back, when we moved from a 2G to a 3G base station, we disaggregated the radio functionality at the cell site and broke one unit into two, namely the radio unit and the baseband unit. The radio unit or the remote radio head contained only the radio functions and was located close to the antenna in the cell site tower whereas the BBU contained all baseband processing functions. Each RRH and BBU pair were connected using a new network segment called the front hall. This connection between the two units gave birth to a bunch of proprietary standards like CIPRI, OPSI and ORI which essentially defined the communication between the two units. We then moved a step further and centralized this architecture by placing a pool of BBUs at a central location and connecting them to their respective RRHs running fibers for long distances. Even beyond that, BBU pool virtualization introduced the concept of shared processing. It was now possible to share the available processing resources among several sites and allocate extra processing efforts when needed in different areas. With the ever-evolving radio access network architecture based on increasing volumes of traffic expected per user, this front hall link was experiencing very high bit rates and becoming non-affordable for network operators. One obvious method of reducing that front hall bandwidth was by placing more functions into the radio unit and process the signals more before it was transmitted over the front hall link. This also meant heavier, costlier, and more power-hungry radio units compared to the previous implementation. All of this led to a flexible implementation of radio functions called as functional splits, which determined the amount of functions left locally at the antenna site and the amount of functions centralized at a higher processing power data center. For NR-5G implementations, the radio processing and baseband functions from the third generation partnership project, which is 3GPP protocol stack, are split up into a distributed unit DU and a centralized unit CU. Before I go deep into different possible architectures with these units, let me spend some time on the actual functions that are programmed into these units. Before you look at this RAND functional split architecture defined for 5G networks, you should know that there is a possibility of virtualizing many of these functions with software and implementing them on commercial off-the-shelf hardware. Right now, you are looking at two different data flows. The one at the top where data enters through the highest layer, layer 3, and moves towards RF and to users connected to the cell tower, also known as the downlink, while the one at the bottom is data that enters through the lowest layer, layer 1, and traverses to RRC and the mobile core, also known as the uplink. There are eight different split options here. Well, to be honest, there are more. But for simplicity, we will stick to these eight options in this video. Split option one is when RRC is placed in the central unit and the rest of the functions are sitting in the DU and RU. Split option two is when we place the RRC and PDCP in the central unit and accommodate the remaining functions in the DU and RU. Split option three or intra-RLC split is when we put the RF5, MAC and low RLC in the RU and DU and keep the remaining functions to be implemented on the CU. Split option 4 is when MAC, PHY and RF are in DU and RU, RLC, PDCP and RRC are in CU. Split option 5 or intra-MAC split is when RF, PHY and some parts of the MAC layer, for example HARC, are in distributed and radio units. Upper layers are in the CU. Split option 6 is when physical and RF layers are in the distributed and radio units, while the upper layers are in the centralized unit. Split option 7 or intra split is when part of the physical layer functions and RF are in the DU and RU, while the upper layers are in the central unit. And finally, the split option 8 where all functions are implemented in the CU other than RF. 
Now, a lot of us who do not come from the RAN transport background understand and appreciate RAN elements only when we compare the architecture with a famous OSI model. Let's do that. To start with, the lower layer or layer 1 is essentially starting after RF as RF or radio frequency layer is essentially the analog or digital conversion of electromagnetic signals. The low phi and the high phi will fall into layer 1. Beyond that, we have a data link layer or layer 2 which is divided into the MAC layer comprising of the low MAC and high MAC and the logical link control layer comprising of the low RLC, high RLC and the packet data convergence protocol or PDCP. Beyond that, it is all IP which means radio resource control or RRC falls in layer 3. Now that we have mapped these functions to our OSI model, let us take a step further and look at specific functionalities of these individual blocks without going into great details. I will freeze the frame there for you to take it all in. While you are consuming this, it is important to understand the impact of these splits on the three essential components of a 5G network, latency, bandwidth, and scalability. A lower layer split, which is close to the RF, means higher bandwidth on the frontal link and catering to very tight latency requirements. It also means the bandwidth scales with the increase in antenna ports. On the other hand, a higher layer split which is close to the PDCP means there is a drastic reduction in bandwidth and relaxation of latency leading to long distances between the CU and the RU. As far as scalability is concerned, higher layer splits scales with MIMO layers. So we have spoken quite a lot about how these splits actually look like. Now it is time to underline the reasons behind functional splits. What are the benefits of implementing a split architecture? As per 3GPP release 14.0 or TR38.801, some of the benefits of these functional splits are 1. Flexible hardware implementations allow scalable cost-effective solutions. It is now easier to adhere to deployment requirements. Operators can pick and choose where to put functionality on the same COTS hardware rather than staying locked to a hardware software bonded architecture. A split architecture between central and distributed units allow for coordination for performance features, load management, real-time performance optimization and enables NFP SDN implementation. Configurable Functional splits enables adaptation to various use cases such as variable latency on transport. Finally, virtualization. Now with functional splits and disaggregation, one can use different software for different purposes coming from different vendors. There's a small caveat there and that is lower layer RAN functions are difficult to virtualize compared to higher layer RAN functions. The choice of how to split NR functions in the architecture depends on some factors related to radio network deployment scenarios, constraints, and intended software services. Some examples of such factors are need to support specific QS settings per offered services, example low latency, high throughput, need to support specific user density and load demand per given geographical area, which may influence the level of RAN coordination, need to support able to function with transport networks with different performance levels from ideal to non-ideal. Well, we have spent a lot of time on definitions and theory. Now let us look at practical implementations based on these splits. Let us start with the most common splitted implementation of a traditional evolved packet system or LTE network. Here all the baseband processing functions namely RRC, PDCP, RLC, MAC, PHY reside inside a physical or a virtual BBU and the RF is seated in a radio unit or a radio head. Now if you move to a small cell deployment or a backhaul use case, the deployment is in the form of an integrated base station where the DU and the RU reside on the same unit called as the RDU. And as you can see here, all the RF and baseband processing functions sit in that RDU at the small cell site. Another well-known implementation which is less bandwidth intensive is a split 7 architecture. As you can see here, the low phi and RF are in the RU and the functions above that are in the DUCU implementations, be it on physical or virtual software. Now this is a split 2 5G NR implementation where we have an RDU with RLC, MAC, phi and RF functions in an integrated base station and it is connected over a mid-hall network to a CU which again can be physical or virtualized with PDCP, SDAP and RSE functions. 
Finally, we'll look at an architecture with multiple functional splits, all implemented by the same network operator. The operator needs to cater to both 4G and 5G customers and has implemented three possible functional splits across his deployments. On the left, you can see this is a split 8 implementation for 4G base stations, and on the right, you can see there are multiple splits in the case of 5G. For NRR use of macro cells, there's a double split of split 8 and split 2. For an open R use of macro cells, there's a double split of split 7 or 7.2x and split 2. And finally, for 5G small cells, there's an integrated base station along with a split 2 for CU implementation. There is no front hall in this scenario, it is a complete mid hall deployment. So there you go. I know this was a very long video, but I had to discuss a lot over here. Thank you for being patient and listening to me for this long. In my next video, I will talk very specifically about the 7.2x split or the open frontal deployment. Watch out for that. That's all for now. I'm signing off. You have a great day. Bye-bye.